without further ado so i would like to invite our speaker insinia hadi sahul untuk um continue the talk on the my season 2 thank you <coughs> dr amno bismillahirrahmanirrahim assalamualaikum and very good morning to all okay uh, um, Again, thank you for the kind introduction, Dr. Amno and Engineer Asrul. Okay. So, uh, today's webinar, we are going to introduce to you, to especially for students, and also those who are from industry, whether you are civil engineer or quantity surveyors, on uh, the subject matter of Malaysian Civil Engineering standard, uh, standard Method of Measurement. And the acronym for that is MySESM2. So, basically, I'm here, actually, I'm a CIDB certified uh, my system two trainer by CIDB, and as mentioned, I'm a US graduate 35 years ago, and I did my MBA in at UIA some 15 years ago, and I'm a executive director of a small uh, medium uh, a small size consultancy CNS consultancy based in Kajang base, and having this logo here. And just to emphasize that CIDB is the champion of my system and now uh, supported also by BCISM. So the, these two organization is the main organization uh, on the, the development, promotion and championing uh, my system too. Okay, we like to see where is the position of this standard method management in particular my system too. Well, if you are already in the industry, you are familiar that for those in the industry, there will be a requirement by the client. For example, uh, the government or uh, private sector probably re require a construction of a road, construction of a water supply, construction of a building, that kind of thing. So that, that all will in, involve all the good professionals, like the architect, CNS engineer, mechanical engineer, electrical engineer, quantity surveyor, to come up with the design. And from the design, accepted design from submission to local authorities, whatnot, accepted approval by local authorities, whatnot. And at the same time, also our good quantity surveyor will prepare a document is shown in this drawing, typically, which is called tender document, which cons consists a draft letter of acceptance, article of agreement, condition of contract, preambles, BQ, schedule of rates, drawing, and among others. Eh? And our standard method measurement actually we are dealing mainly on the bq side eh? so bq for those who have seen a bq basically is a list of items so that the contractor or the tenderer can price it to come up with times the quantity therefore there will be an amount at all the amount they thought, therefore it become a total sum and this total sum is considered uh, is named as a tender sum if that title sum is accepted, then it becomes a contract sum. That will be the basis of a contract to a contractor by the client and supervised, I mean, monitored by the respective consultant. So this condition of contract mainly dealing with BQ, how we uh, describe our BQ, how we prepare our BQ and so on. So next, by definition, Standard method measurement or SMM is a documentation of rules and provision into BQ identified by drawings and specification. That is general specification, the general definition for SMM. Whereas engineering works, it means all building, machine, equipment, processes, works or projects that require the application of engineering principle and data. That is engineering works. Next, what is civil engineering works? Civil, sorry. Civil engineering works is generally a construction, maintenance, including public works such as road, bridges, canal, dams, airport, tourist system, pipeline, structure component of building, railways, and so on. Generally, civil engineering work is a non-dwelling unit. So you can see, you can imagine a bridge, nobody live on the bridge. Maybe somebody live under lah. But generally, it is a non-dwelling unit. So it is infrastructure work. Or sometimes you're going to call it as external works. Okay, we continue. Okay, where does this standard method measurement uh, being captured under legally, under the, under the legal uh, provision of it? 
So I think most of us are familiar with this JKR form 203A or 203, uh, okay, standard method measurement under sub clause 26.4, it says, the BQ, unless otherwise explicitly stated, blah, 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 being prepared in accordance to the principle of standard method of measurement of building works by ISM, Institution of Surveyor Malaysia, that's number one, or number two, civil engineering standard method of measurement published by the Institution of Civil Engineer London, wow, ICE London, or method of measurement as set out in the BQ. You see, all right, from this sub clause, you can see there are three types. Number one for building works, number two is for civil engineering works, number three method of measurement as set up by the BQ. And for the, the third type is normally it is mentioned in the preambles. Okay. When let me explain here the civil engineering standard method measurement for ICE London. The reason for that is simple because you see this document PWD 203A was produced in back in 2010. Whereas our my system one was only produced in 2011. Okay. In our IEM condition of contract, this one, this, this is for civil engineering. We have the blue one for mechanical and electrical works. For IEMCE, we, there is also provision for method of measurement under sub prosperity 5.4. And this generally, this is what it says about it. Eh? Generally, it should be a method of measurement. So, being IEMCE, civil engineering, so the the only method of standard method of measurement is applicable in this case is naturally my system two. Eh? Okay. Now we look at UK's experience. Of course, most of the time, uh, we being a former colony of the, 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 the of the of the UK, we always look at them uh, as for lay, a way forward. Eh? So UK. They have this experience since 1976. Huh? System 1, System 2 in 85, System 3 in 91, and revised slightly in 98, and System 4 in uh, 2012, and revised in 2019. Huh? So this is System 3, System 4, and System 4 revised. So you can see UK has a long tradition, huh? more than 40 years. Huh? Uh, uh, well, uh, on on uh, civil engineering standard method measurement, and from there we take cognizant, we look at their document, and we copy, amend, and suit to our local usage and practice. Eh? So we so therefore we have our my system and one and my system two. Now we are using my system two. Okay, benefit of my system, of course, when you have a standardized big standardized standard method measurement. So your BQ will become standardized. It will be more systematic structure and uniform, uniformity of items. We can we can have an uh, item that is adequately represented. We also there's a under my system two and my system one previously, we have something what we call it contractor to write in. This is what they call met, you will see shortly. It is called method related charges. Eh? And finally, it will not repeat information in the BQ. Eh? All right, what happens if you do not have a standard method measurement? So you are expected to see increased v variation orders, inc uh, additional claims, difficult to justify best offer, difficult to manage the contract finance, finance, and risk is higher to both parties. And all this will lead to unnecessary dispute, loss of product productivity and resources, as well as delay and low quality. Eh? Okay, now we look at Malaysian history on uh, civil engineering standard method measurement. Back in 2003, CIDB come out with this document following the UK SASM 3. So, but we, we call ours is SASM, Malaysian SASM. But during that time, the uh, CIDB just produced this document. There's no push for it. So, it become an academic exercise. Huh? Some people aware about it, bought it, look at it, and put it aside. They never have a push to use it or whatnot. Eh? And starting 2011, CDB produced a suit of three books. The main one is the white book here in the middle. 
And not only that, CIDB train trainers like us, like me, like myself, and more than uh, more than 100 of us. And uh, in what uh, CIDB conducted uh, MOU with several key organisation, JKR, uh, Plus, uh, MRT Core, Gamuda, all that, to promote the use of my system. So that is the role of CIDB championing the 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 the, the, the cost. And now you can see people start using my system. And recently, to 2018, about three years, almost three years ago, uh, the uh, my system one was revised, upgraded, so it become my system two. This is the main book. I call it the green book. It's the main book. And this is uh, this, this is a lab, uh, the standard a library of standard description for BQ. And this is a guide on the use of my system two. Eh? And if you need to buy these books, eh, you the cost will be 150 ringgit, the suit for three books. You can purchase it at any of CIDB, either issue or branches. Or if you are coming to IEMPJ or RISMPJ, you can also buy, uh, buy it at IEMPISM. There's a, there's a one office in between IEM and RISM. Okay. The main book, the most important book is the, I call it the green book, My System 2, which is consisted of the work classification and rules of measurement. The price of it is 45 ringgit. And the content of this, basically the table of content is divided into chapters. You can see chapters A, or uh, yeah, what we don't call it chapters, we call it class. Class A until class W. Sorry, class A is missing here huh? somehow. But A is general general items, or what we would like to understand it as preliminaries. Huh? So this is the classes or the, the chapters. Huh? And if you open up the book, sorry, you don't have the opportunity to have the book with you. But when you purchase it, then you will see something like this. Huh? The book was, uh, the daily layout of the book is something like this. Huh? It has uh, many columns. And the first column is called uh, first division, second division third division, then the units for of this is all the items. And for this all uh, items, he has the relevant uh, related uh, rules, huh? which is uh, under here is the measurement rules, then the definition rules, then the coverage rules, and the additional descriptive rules. So these rules, uh, where, where, where applicable, is applied to this item here. So Making that uh, that item when you pre describe it, you do not have to describe it in one like uh, one big paragraph. You know, it just sometimes as a simple uh, single liner will sufficient because whatever single liner is also reflected. I mean, the rules is reflected according, accordingly. The next book is the guide to nation uh, to my system, and this guide is quite good. Eh? It's quite good. Uh, this is a sample. If you open up a page and the the the, 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 the layout of this, uh, the description, the explanation is with diagrammatic whatnot, tables whatnot. Eh? They give you explanation, and this book is very good for uh, students, young graduates, uh, recent graduates, uh, for young uh, civil engineers, and also young uh, quantity surveyors, where. After all, no no civil engineer will able to do all civil engineering works. For example, even though I have 35 years uh, experience behind me, I have not done any tunneling works, that kind of thing. Uh, similarly, uh, most QS is involved with building works. So for civil engineering works, is they are not that familiar. So this book, the guide to my system, will be the good first hand uh, reference for them. Eh? Of course, you can always go use Google also. Yeah. Okay, next is they call it the library of uh, standard BQ description for my system. And, and also this item also is available in MS Excel format. But this MS Excel format is known is normally given to you if you attend uh, you attended uh, any of this uh, my, uh, my system to courses eh, at IEM or any, anywhere else. And if you look at this, the, if you open up this this book, the library description. So this is how it described, you see? A lot of it is single liner, eh? single liner eh? rather than like a paragraph. Eh? 
So why is that? Because we have this, what you call it, the coding. And the coding will refer back to all, uh, to all uh, uh, the rules, eh? the measurement rules, the definition rule, the coverage rule, the additional descriptive rule. So that's why you do not, do not need to describe it in one big paragraph eh? that we normally see eh? in our preparation of BQ previously. Eh? All right. Now we compare civil engineering standard method measurement and building standard method measurement. Eh? So for building, previously we are using SMM2, eh? issued in year 2000, which this one, this one. And the recent one, just this year, we have MySUM, eh? MYSMM, eh? this year, and this is new. Eh? So anybody, uh, especially quantity surveyors eh? and the student of quantity surveying, is this a good idea to uh, to make yourself uh, to make this uh, publication available to you and you can be purchased at RISM and the price is about uh, is 60 ringgit uh. and continue for building was in the UK yeah? until recently we use SMM7 this one but this has been replaced by NRM2 uh, uh, new rules of measurement uh, this one uh, uh, for civil engineering works in the UK, we are, they are using CSMM4 and in Malaysia, we are using uh, my system too. Eh? Okay, now let us compare, I mean, between my system 2 compared to SMM2. Eh? I have no opportunity to check in detail my uh, and my sum, so I'm still using SMM2. Eh? Uh, which is the previous standard method measurement for building works, uh, year 2000. Uh. So the main difference is general items. Uh, in in, in uh, SMM2, they call it preliminaries. Then we have this one uh, item called method-related charges. This is unique to our My System 2. Uh. Building uh, SMM do not have this, uh, method-related charges. Next, we have a coding system. And I will show you how is the coding is being done. And standard description from my system. This one. Okay, this is uh, standard description from my system. So measurement rules. I mean, and under the sorry, yeah, under my system, as I mentioned earlier, we have the measurement rules, definition rules coverage rule and additional descriptive rule. Eh? Sorry, uh, I have a problem with. Excuse me, eh, gentlemen. I have problem to move my slide. Eh? I need to stop sharing for a moment and relaunch. Eh? Sorry. Okay, I hope I'm I'm okay. Sorry about the minor interruption. Eh? Okay. All right. Next, we come to area. Who uses my system two or my system eh, previously? So on that subject matter. JPS, eh, Jabatan Pengairan and Saliran eh, HQ, eh, HQ, has been using this document since, if I'm not mistaken, since 2014. Eh. Wow, that's since more than six years ago. Eh. And KPLB, previously KKLW, has been using this also since for the uh, uh, Bekalan Air Luar Bandar and also Bekalan uh, 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 apa, Jalan Luar Bandar. They have been using this also eh, since 2014. Eh. Again, is JKR, oh, sorry, JKR and others. Huh? Others, uh, I think, plus is start using. Uh, JKR is for the new project. The, the recently project, completed project using my system was uh, a bridge over Sungai Perak at Manong. Huh? So JKR been using that. And in fact, regarding to JKR, the Director General have issued a circular dated uh, August 2016 that 
uh, for all infrastructure project need to follow either this document road work or this document bridge work. Uh, this is nota teknik jalan. Okay. And well, JKR has started. So when JKR started, then all consultants, uh, contractor, well, we need to use this, uh, my system too. Eh? But the only problem is that this, this two document was produced in 2016. It follow my system one. So these two documents need to be upgraded to suit with our my system two, which produced in 2018. Okay, gentlemen, we come to an, another interesting part of our my system two. So civil engineering side method management, not only he has one book, the green book just now, it also being backed by a Malaysian standard. So when we have a Malaysian standard, you know, so it, it is not only an enabling document for my system two, it also contain all the necessary principle of my system two. I think for civil engineers, especially, uh, when you want to design, you uh, maybe concrete design, previously you used BS8110, eh? and nowadays you're using Euro code. So same here for SMM, for standard method management, in this case, civil engineering standard method management, we have the code, eh, the Malaysian standard, to 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 be used in 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 tandem with your green book just now. So what does this this Malaysian standard consist? In the the content of it. Uh, we look uh, come. We look uh, at the, the content of this Malaysian standard. Okay, the principle of this Malaysian standard there are seven. Uh, consists in seven section. Eh, section one, two until seven. The section one is uh, scope and general. Section two, application of the work classification. Section three, coding and numbering of items. Section four, preparation of BQ. Section five, completion, pricing, and the use of the BQ. Section six, method related charges. And section seven, the table content eh, from uh, chapter uh, chapter A until chapter W or in the proper way is class A until class W. Okay, section one, we have scope, normative references, Term and definition, and this is the normal definition, generally, normal definition. And towards the end, we have this abbreviation and unit. For my system two, interesting, sorry, excuse me. The interesting thing uh, compared to the normal building BQ is that, for example, we have a square meter. Under building BQ, we write it as SQ.M, correct? Remember? But under my system, we straight away choose uh, like the, the normal uh, engineering number as M2. Eh? Sorry. Straight away, M2. Eh? And similarly, for cubic meter, we do not use, we do not write it as CU.M, but we write it as M3 that, that way. Next will be the number. We do not put NO or NOS, but whether it's singular or plural, we use NR, number. And regarding this, TAN, for reinforcement bar, we do not measure in kg, but we measure in TAN. Eh? But we are allowed to use up to two decimal places. Eh? So reason why you use TAN, because civil engineering works, we use so much of reinforcement bar compared to building works. So that's why we measure in TAN straight away. And the accuracy is 10 kg, when you use two decimal places, which is good enough for tenderers and contractors. Eh? Next, we have section two, application of work classification. We, for that, we, again, you have seen the table content. We have class A until class W. And in, you have seen the sample of the green book, the inside of the green book. We have three division, first, first division, second division, and third division. And every time also, maximum you have is eight descriptive feature of work. Okay, so for that, have, have a look at this one. Eh? Again, eh? we have three division, remember? First division, second division, third division. Sorry. And you mentioned about eight descriptive work. You see here, number one, number two, and num until number eight. You do not have number nine. Similar here, similarly here, you have number one, Number two, until number eight, you do not have number nine. And there's a reason for it, eh, which I will tell you shortly. Eh? Okay. We have the measurement rules. Again, eh, same. 
definition rules, coverage and additional descriptive rule. Eh? Here is measurement rules, definition, definition rules, coverage and additional descriptive rule. Eh? And the application of rule, you follow the horizontal line. That means, unfortunately, you don't have the book with you, but generally you can understand Sometimes the, 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 the presentation in that book is come in rows. When it come in rows, item the, the top row, the item in the top row, the rows in the top uh, row only is applicable to that, that item, something like that. Uh, I hope you have the general idea of it. Eh? Next, the interesting part also, the coding. Eh? So the coding will consist one alphabet and three digits. For example, this one. Eh? This is not one, eh? this is I. I four two zero i the diff, this the first uh, alphabet here the, this the alphabet is come from class i actually and i is meant for concrete work the first digit is from the first division second digit is from the second division and the third digit is from the third division for the first division four and second division two and third division zero it means four under precast concrete wherein another division number two is mean beams so altogether, I four two zero it means precast beam, uh, precast concrete in beams. That is what that is all the coding all about. As simple as that. But in addition to that, we have also asterisk number nine zero and decimal point. What what are these? Eh? So first of all, asterisk. Eh? Asterisk actually is a temp temporary coding number. Uh, number. For example, you open up uh, bridge drawings. And a bridge drawing has so many types of reinforcement bar, the sizes. Eh? You have T12, T16, T20, T25, T32. Okay. So for that, you go to appropriate one. So you use asterisk. That means, uh, I mean, asterisk means encompassing of this group of reinforcement bar. Uh, that is asterisk. But in, the, the, in your BQ, finally, you will never see any asterisk whatsoever. That is only for temporary. Eh? Number nine. And we look at this. Eh? For example, we need to use, for example, eh, for your I beam, you need, for for your post tension beam, you need to use grid eighty concrete. And we look here. I hope you can see this. Eh? We have grid C fifteen, twenty until the the highest one is C fifty. There's no grid eighty. So, so the idea is when you want to introduce something but should belong in this group, then you use the number nine. So number nine, grade C80. So then you use number nine, okay? That is how we, we use number nine. Uh, I mean, the, the, the coding number nine. Uh. Next is number zero. Number zero means when under the division is empty, uh, it does not nothing, and use number zero. And the next one will be decimal point. Decimal point actually like this one, dot one can be dot two, dot three. It, the same item, but he has slightly similar uh, attributes. Okay, as for example, for that, here, you have this long beam. Uh, it's a 67 meter beam. Uh, 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 they call it a B, BH girder, uh, meant for our new highway yet to be completed, SPE highway. This one, 67 meter long. Uh. So you can see the description, uh, this one. 67 meter long BH girder, to viaduct abutment A1 to pier 1 span. Then the same thing, pier 1 to pier 2 span. That means it's telling you same beam, but different span. Maybe the reason why you, you distinguish between the span is, for example, the first span is easy to launch. So the beam can be much cheaper. Whereas the second, sorry. Whereas the second beam may be launched over a traffic, maybe a road, huh? uh, live traffic or launch over a river. So you probably you need to do additional uh, work. Huh? For example, if launch over a river, probably you need a temporary bridge. Therefore, the second span is more expensive. So that's why you distinguish it. When you do the same item, but you distinguish then you use dot one and dot two. That is how uh, or about dot one and dot two. Ladies, gentlemen, students, and also practicing QS engineers, you know, should you have any question, you, you please, you can start, uh, 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 start uh, develop your question and you can ask me towards the end of the presentation. Thank you.
Okay, next, section four, prepare BQ. This prepare BQ is the same as whether it's a building uh, a building project or civil engineering project. Eh? So the, the BQ is the normal BQ that we see. Eh? Nothing much, nothing much different. Eh? And of course, in this particular one, it shows that you have the uh, table of content. The table of content says, uh, number one will be preambles, then the BQ itself. Is, uh, most in the previous one, you are familiar with build one, eh? general items or preliminaries, build two, build three, and so on. But for civil engineering, you would like to distinguish yourself, we would like to recommend you instead of using build, you use part one, part two, part three, and so on. And of course, when you have finished with this, you have a grand summary, and you maybe allow also the work schedule eh, to be placed in your BQ. And most imp another important idea, the next one will be preambles. Eh? Another important uh, area. Okay, remember earlier on when I say uh, under JKR two zero three A, you mentioned three type uh, three type of uh, uh, standard method measurement. The first one is for building works. Second one is for civil engineering works. The third one as per mentioned in the BQ. So when you have mentioned BQ, you have preambles. Eh? So in the preambles, when you do not follow the building standard method measurement, you do not follow civil engineering standard method method, method of measurement. Then your preamble is going to be very very thick you know this one it's going to be very thick but let's say you are doing civil engineering work for example it's a road project highway project a water supply project a sewage treatment plant project a water treatment plant project a airport project then you do not need to have a very thick preamble because in fact in your, in your preamble you just mention one paragraph you say uh the bills of quantities is the paragraph says something like this the bill of quantity is measured using my system two, full stop. And then, so, if, of course, you do need to attach my system two, the book, the green book, because that one is readily available in the public domain. So, you just need to mention that statement. Should you come to a dispute with your contractor, for example, let's say you're working as a consultant or client side, and you dispute, contractor, say, hey, your method of measurement is wrong, and you refer to the preamble, the preamble clearly state, follow my system too. So you need to take, therefore, from there, you take the green book, open up all the, or whatever, the relevant portion, look at it, compare, ah, oh, you measure it this way. So that means the client and consultant have an upper hand compared to the contractor, should the contractor is not aware or ignorant on my system too. Eh? Okay, state method of measurement use. Okay, this, I exactly just mentioned that. Eh? Other method use, okay. For this item, for example, let's assume you have another project KLIA3. So for KLIA3, uh, bulk of it is civil engineering, but a portion of it is still building project, uh, build, uh, building work. Yeah? Okay, what I mean by uh, KLIA3, first of all, you need to do the site clearing. Then the ground improvement, you need to do earthwork, you need to do drainage, you need to do uh, the apron, taxiways, and whatnot. Eh? Uh, we need uh, fencing, gates, whatnot. Eh? So that one all civil engineering. But when it come to make um, uh, main terminal building, that one strictly under the RSM MISM eh? or MISM SMM2. Eh? So for that, in the preambles, you mentioned this. Uh, so when you are doing KLI3, KLIA3, eh? so you say, all right. Uh, standard method measurement for this uh, project shall be my system two. Full stop. Then next paragraph. But for the main terminal building, the standard method measurement shall be my sum by RISM. So there's two paragraph there is already mentioned exactly which one to follow, which one not to follow. In fact, if you open up your BQ, then you probably see for the building works. Under the coding, we probably empty there because saying before building that uh, maybe they don't use a coding, eh? that kind of thing. The previous one, assignment two, they do not have any coding, but the new one, they have the coding. But yet to we yet to discover how eh? exactly. Next, work is not covered by MS system two. Exactly the same. Eh? Uh, so work that is not covered by MS system two, uh, like um, the main terminal building. So we mentioned we mentioned that accordingly. Eh? All right. Next will be adjustment and amendment to my system two. Okay, this one example is 
if you have the opportunity to open up your uh, you have the green book you open up eh? example i'll give you an example eh? uh, drainage work drainage work you see eh, for when we have a uh, road work we have this drainage work related to the road work eh? so the simple one is roadside drain berm drain car drain tow drain whatnot eh? and you if you can see the most of the time the excavation for it is quite shallow right generally near surface eh? I mean, most of it not exceeding 1.5 meter deep, uh, that kind of thing, uh, depth. Uh. So, uh, but in the my system, the 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 the, the item is the given is like this: excavation is one item, then the line drain and another item, uh, two two different item. Uh. So, uh, you can also make adjustment, uh, saying that you are fusing these two. So you go to the preambles, you say for drainage work, when you see line drain, it means inclusive of the excavation work also. That means you, when you say line drain, excavation is inclusive. So that is what, we, what I call amendment to my system two eh, or adjustment. Eh. So when you have made that amendment, it takes precedent. Eh. So the amendment takes precedent compared to the regular or the normal my system two. Next. Okay, so division of BQ into parts is uh, as, as is similar to the one that we are familiar with in the building works, for example, building BQ. They will schedule the same also as building BQ. And the the outlet of the BQ is like this, except we have introduction of additional column for our coding. Eh? Yeah. And extent of optimization and description, same. Description also the same. And as I mentioned, description. We have a standard library of description. You you are you are recommended to use that, but of course, no project is the same. All projects are unique, so you always copy, paste, amend, or copy, paste, modify your description to suit your project. Eh? So this is very important to have the understanding of your own project, uh, your own drawings, and to when you prepare your BQ, to prepare your BQ to suit your drawing specification and your project. Ranges of dimension I mentioned, most of it, because the item can be quite large, eh, normally, therefore it's allowed for you to use one decimal place. For example, you do site clearing. Eh, site clearing is in hectare, large one, completely building, building works. Last time they used um, uh, square meter. Eh. So when you use hectare in, in civil engineering work, it's quite large. So you're allowed to use one decimal place. Eh. So at least you reduce the, the, the size of the area. But for, I mentioned earlier, for reinforcement bar, the units is done, so you are allowed to use two decimal places huh, for your reinforcement bar. Next will be prime cost item. Prime cost item, same as per building, is allowance for you to allow to, to have a nominated sub subcorrector or nominated supplier. Then professional sum, the uses of it is the same as per building BQ. Quantities mentioned same the method of you to extract out is you whether you use the autocad or moss or you measure it using scale rule whatnot is up to you from the drawing and normally you're allowed to use one decimal point and civil engineering also involve work near or on water or in water so work affected by water we need to know the fluctuation level that means we need to know the normal high tide level so anything below that is considered uh, excavation or filling below water. That kind of thing. So normally below water, the rate is, uh, is at premium. So that's why we need to distinguish uh, to understand what will be the fluctuation uh, water level. Again, the form and setting as described earlier. Then the collection page. Then the grant summary. Uh, and again, this is an example of a Table of content for BQ for uh, water treatment books. Eh? So you have again eh, preambles, then the BQ proper, grand summary, and the work schedule. Simple one, you can see a lot of the description also. It's a single liner, or a lot of it is single liner. Of course, there is also description that come into become like a paragraph. But even though it's single liner, keep it simple, sweet, and simple. We have this coding, and we, when we have this coding, it relates all the necessary rules of measurement, 
coverage, definition, and additional descriptive rules. Eh? Section five now. When we complete, uh, we need to do, we need to allow pricing and use the BQ, you know, to use the best knowledge on your market rates. Eh? So you insert the rates and price and total it out. And uh, sorry, total it out. And once you total, it become your cost estimate for your project. Sometimes you it is also quite normal for you when you total it out. Uh, the first figure when your senior engineer or senior QS look at it, he said, "Wow, the price is simply too high." So you need to rationalize again. So you go back, rationalize again, and come up with more to the more reasonable or acceptable level or maybe you need to increase or that depending on the policy or the planning on the outlook of the subject matter normally your senior will decide what will be the the, the reasonable uh, level of the cost estimate or anggaran jabatan eh? next section six method related charges acronym mrc uh, this is important interesting because only in civil engineering uh, standard method measurement, we have this item, not in building standard method measurement. Eh? So for this, we have something that what they call time related charges and fixed charges. And again, contractor shall not be bound, eh? not be bound by the method proposed and not subject to remeasurement, but price for valuation or variation and payment in to be in, included in interim certificate and paid in full. Is maybe you don't understand what it means. Huh? Never mind, let me explain further. And normally the BQ for this is the outlook will be like something like this. Okay, it says that cadangan membina jalan sambungan from X, uh, XYZ to Taman ABCD and part 1A or maybe you want to call part 2. Remember part is bill, huh? bill 1A or bill 2 or something. Method related charges. Method related charges to be inserted by the tenderer in accordance with section 6 of the nation standard, if applicable. Then the reference, there's no coding. Eh? Please list and state details. Every item inserted shall be fully described and defined clearly to identify the labor plan, material use, including the following method of work, work program, cost breakdown. Okay, what is this all about? Sorry, eh? what is this all about? I give you an example. Eh? I give you an example. Let's say, excuse me. Let's say there's a tender for a sewage treatment plant. Yeah? Sewage treatment plant. And interestingly, because the sewage treatment plant is being designed, that the main uh, treatment basin is to be constructed underground. Okay, you imagine this is a major, in fact, the biggest in probably in Malaysia, say, uh, biggest in Southeast Asia or maybe in Malaysia, like this, uh, the biggest. So you can, can imagine the size, the depth of this excavation going to be. Yeah? So the quantity of the concrete, eh, you can imagine the concrete is the most predominant material to be used in this particular type of concrete. You have the uh, the, the the bottom slab, the walls, the, the, the service level, the service level and the roof. And the roof is actually at the ground level. So having the roof, eh, allow the roof to be used for other purpose. In this particular case, maybe you can allow a sport complex, eh, you allow a football field, uh, a futsal, uh, basketball, tacro, not and uh, tennis, whatever on top. Eh? So which is lightly loaded, eh? generally lightly loaded. Eh? You don't have any heavy heavy equipment on top. Eh? So and allowed having said that, then your columns don't have to be so close together. And you can imagine the amount of concrete eh, to be used for this project. Eh? So assuming, assuming this is being this project is being tendered out. Eh? using my system two as a basis as a standard method measurement for the BQ. Eh? So all tenderers came in, but none of the tenderers know what is MRC except one. Okay. And this particular one says, well, so when he studied the BQ, he sees that the, the concrete quantity is simply huge, eh? tremendous. Eh? So he said, okay, for these material charges, I'm going to put a baking plant on site capable to do uh, the, to, to come up with 60 cubic meter per, per hour, uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Uh, so that is the method of work. Is 
the betting plan, uh, betting betting plan, uh, betting plan, uh, matter of work. Eh? The, the matter of work is betting plan on site. The work program is so because the, the 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 construction of this project is over a brown field. Eh? You have uh, what what you mean by brown field is that at the, at the particular location. There's existing, there's oxidation pond, uh, oxidation pond, then uh, he has uh, that kind of thing. Eh? So they need to uh, prepare a, a temporary uh, treatment facility first to divert the flow. And then, then only they can dewater and desludge all the all the sludge in the oxidation pond. Eh? Uh, then only they can start to the excavation. Uh, maybe the the, the protect uh, the, the temporary protection for the deep excavation, and can then uh, excavation to the to the to the foundation level. Then only can start concrete the base or not. Eh? So the work program is that it says the concreting work is only on the second year until the end of the third year, and the cost group breakdown they give eh? every month for to run the batching plan is hundred thousand or set up one hundred thousand and dispense one hundred thousand. So total because of 24 months is 2.4 million plus setup and dismantle another 200,000. So total here sum is 2.6 million. When they put this 2.6 million here, the normal concrete maybe the because the concrete because this is liquid retaining structure. Normally the grade is 35A. So instead of the five, the, the normal rate uh, market rates for supply, install, uh, vibrate whatnot. Eh? Maybe let's say like 500 ringgit. Most of the tender will include that at 500 ringgit. But because you have this part of the cost here, so you put your cost, uh, I mean, your, your rate. Uh, this particular tender, you put the rate is only 450 ringgit. Uh, you still make some nominal profit lah out of that rate eh? because he know he's get paid here also. Eh? So never mind. So because of that, this total offer, let's say 980 million. Whereas the other tenders is one billion and over, and because of that, because he also considered competent, we bower, and man, because of that, he is being selected to become the contractor, successful tender. So I'm saying that method researchers, if you know how to apply it, you know how to use it innovatively, you can it can work to your advantage. So, what else interesting about this matter is that related charges. Simple. Another another example is that assuming originally the, the concrete to be to be to be placed under this particular project is let's say like two hundred thousand cubic meter. Suddenly, half I mean halfway into the project, there's a requirement to add another facility. Uh, which require about ten additional ten thousand cubic meter, okay, of concrete, eh? of that particular concrete. You see, the win-win part is here. Is the VO, all right? I mean, or at least remeasurement on the quantity, and the contractor, this particular contractor, get paid only four hundred fifty ringgit per cubic meter. And you see, at that rate, actually the client is saving fifty ringgit per cubic meter. Because normally, if you if another person being engaged and this VO come, the claim will be 400 ringgit per meter. Whereas this particular one, because of his, they use the MRC, he only being paid 450 ringgit. So the saving is 50 ringgit per meter times 10,000 cubic meter. So that is win-win. I mean, after all, the contractor still have the nominal profit for every cubic meter. So okay with him. But the the main the main win is to the client because there's a saving of generally saving of 50 ringgit per cubic meter. Yeah? So it's beautiful. Yeah? Okay, another example I have to highlight here. Contractor shall not be bound by the method. Yeah? This one, yeah? interesting. This one. I mentioned about the contractors, I mean, method will be putting a batching plant on site. Okay. You see the site, remember earlier, because the site, the first year is generally is to prepare the temporary treatment facility, then to do the dewatering and to do the desludging. Okay, so that, that alone take one year. You see, when you do a mega project like that, the, the word of mouth also travel. Eh? So that's one entrepreneur having a piece of land adjacent to the site asking, 
uh, what project they are going to do and it, then we come to his knowledge and the, the project is about constructing a mechanized plant eh? so a lot of concrete to be used eh? so instead of you know and he see this as an opportunity and this entrepreneur set up a baking plant exactly or better than what the contractor have envisaged earlier he put up a baking plant adjacent to the project exactly like to the requirement of the contractor you know so contractors seeing that actually when they put this particular entrepreneur put a baking plant not only he want to sell to this uh, project but also whoever wants to order from him okay uh, i mean he's being a, a businessman entrepreneur so it doesn't matter to him whoever wants to order he can order so this contractor look just a baking plant already set up okay so he goes to this entrepreneur contractor goes to the entrepreneur and strike a commercial deal first right of refusal when he uh, contractor order uh, entrepreneur can only, uh, must only supply him then only him alone that kind of thing and the commercial rate also favorable so finally the contractor never set up baking plant whatsoever on site okay but on the day he required concrete the concrete the supply come as though he has a, a baking plant on site so and at the at the end of the month he claimed and he shall be paid in full and no issue is that oh you do not provide i don't pay because remember in the first in the first first place the acceptance of the tender is based on the tender sum okay and the tender sum also come with this requirement method or method of work, work program and cost as long as the work program the first month or second year the concrete comes and the contractor claim so he should be shall be paid that's it so that's the beauty thing eh? even though you do not set up your baking plan you still get paid as though you have a baking plan so it's beautiful isn't it this method of charges enough said about this method of charges and the um, and the uh, we continue uh, section seven again as you've been mentioned two years earlier is like a chapter Next, or uh, the better still, better still is class Plus uh, A, so plus B, uh, and T, plus w. A, of and the the uh, one the one covered under uh, uh, the red one, one, this one, P, uh, U, so and W. This is free. This free is actually is a new classer added to Master Sum Two. If you look at Master Sum One, this three are not there. So it's a new item to be added. And generally, majority of industry player now find that the detailed rules the various work specifications to be good, practical and workable, both at the pre-tender and post-tender stage, huh? with the UK study. Huh? The Towards the last time we look, typical, huh? this is a non-standard BQ, non-standard BQ for a road project. Uh, and this is actually is a real uh, life project, but I have, I have, uh, I have uh, 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 obscure the actual project, which project is that. Huh? But the description and consistency are the same. Huh? You see, uh, previously, when we describe something, it's always like one full uh, paragraph, uh, like that. And again, one and full paragraph, because this paragraph also is the, the rules of it. Eh? Include all the rules here, eh? the whole paragraph here. And he almost, almost every item also, he has his own, uh, what they call header, header, header everywhere. And this is non-standard, and this is for site clearance and demolition works, eh? this one. If I convert this to my system BQ, it becomes like this. Sweet and simple. And the main difference, there will be additional column, which is the coding. And a lot of it is a single line, although there are also some uh, description that require also like a paragraph because this, to suit that project itself. Huh? So this is example of the My System 2 BQ. Huh? Sweet and simple, but it's complete. Uh, it's good because it's been covered by My System 2 book, the green book, the rules, uh, measurement rules, the coverage rule, definition rule, and additional descriptive rule. Eh? Now we look again another example. This time, earthwork. Eh? Earthwork. You can see this is the typical. See, eh? look. Uh, I mean, you look at the description. This is typical. Previously, this is how we prepare our BQ for external uh, for, uh, for infrastructure work. Eh? This particular case is uh, Jalan Sambungan. Eh? It's a 
I mean somewhere. So this is how it looks. But you convert this to my system, we convert this to my system. It looks like this. Sweet and simple. But don't don't don't, don't be afraid saying that it's too simple. Because remember the coding and the coding has rules. And in fact, the rules is so standard that there will be minimum min, less room for dispute. So that's the beauty. Eh? And again, remember this description can always cut, paste, amend, cut, paste, amend from, let's say you are the consultant preparing this video. It's beautiful because you are the MS Excel of this description, the copy, cut, paste, amend, or, or, or modify. And it's much, much easier, faster for you to prepare BQ. And for the practitioner, young engineers, or young quantity surveyors, should you need to know more about uh, my system, you are welcome to come to IEM for a two day course. We will cover all this. And especially this workshop, uh, workshop one, workshop two, workshop three, workshop four, we really going to construct, I mean, prepare BQ for you. I mean, together we're going to prepare BQ. And of course, if you come to this course, we, you are also given uh, various uh, resources on my system too, and especially on the MS Excel of the library, the standard library description. And with that, I thank you for your attention and I welcome for you to ask me questions. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Engineer Shahul. Uh, <coughs> Engineer Shahul, uh, you can uh, stop presenting the, the, the slide. Okay, all right. Uh, okay, so far, uh, thank you for your um, very interesting topic on mycism and uh, is practicable to the industry and who, who are <coughs> involved in this industry, in this construction industry. So, um, actually, we have uh, several questions from the floor. Um, can I read and you you you, you can uh, try to answer their questions regarding the this topic lah. Boleh je? Boleh boleh. Datang. Okay, alright. Okay, I think I will try to get one by one lah. Then the question in the chat chat box. Okay. <coughs> so uh, so actually I'm I'm not uh Susanna Binti Ramli because I I using the uh, doctor. Dr. Susanna punya account because I don't don't have uh, any Webex account. Uh, I'm Asyur Reza Zulkipi from the Faculty of uh, Civil Engineering. Okay, uh, first question from uh, Adlin Shah. Okay, for design and build contract, my system can be adopted. Okay, and then I will, I will, apa nama baca lagi satu, lagi satu soalan, supaya cepat sikit dia punya, dia punya, dia punya. okay, for, uh, first for design and build, so, Allah berkenaan dengan design and build contract, can, can my system can be adopted? And then, can I have a sample for preamble? I think Haji dah mentioned pasal the preamble tadi. So, you can uh, put the the code, uh, a simple code compared to uh, SMM and compared to SMM. I think uh, Haji boleh jawab yang soalan yang the first dulu before I go. Okay, the, right. the first question is, is, is my system to applicable for design and build project? Okay, the answer to that is, it is applicable for design of book project if the project is of infrastructure or civil engineering project. So, for example, if you design a build, do constructing a road or highway, then it's applicable. So, if you are talking about a railway, it's applicable. You are talking about MRT, yes, it's applicable. You are talking about water treatment plant, yes, it's applicable. Whether it is a design and build or it's a conventional, yes, it's applicable as long as it's meant for civil engineering or infrastructure project. Thank you for that. Okay, uh, another question. I think this is, uh, I think this is from, from, from university. Yang tadi itu dari industry. This is from university. I think uh, from Unimas. I am Nurin from Unimas. Okay. Um, may I know <clears throat> if some items such as flat wall, it doesn't have in my season two. So 
may I use any item related to flat wall? And because uh, again, again, flat wall, eh? F L O O D, eh? flat wall, yeah, flat, flat, yeah, flat, flat wall. I mean, sorry, flat wall is a term for a wall. Sometimes you might you want to use a sheet pile. Sometimes you yeah, want yeah, to yeah. use a retaining wall. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In our my system too, we have sheet pile, steel sheet pile. We have a concrete sheet pile. We also have uh, R, you can also use RC retaining wall. You have articulated slab. There are many, many, many items in my system too. So depending which one, you you can use that. But if there is, I mean, if you have after studying my system too, there's no such item. You can introduce another item. Use the coding number nine. It's okay. Code, coding number nine. Okay, all right. So uh, another question. Study uh, dulu. <laughs> I am afraid that there, the item is there because you might call it flat wall, but actually it's probably yeah, a it's concrete a sheet retaining pile. wall mm. or maybe a concrete sheet pile. So yeah. that, that's the thing. You need to, <laughs> to, to have a better understanding on that. Then only look at the uh, my system, the green book, especially go through all and you might discover it is there. And when it's confirmed it's not there, then only use number nine. Okay, uh, this one regarding the method related charge. Okay, in, in your opinion, why contractor reluctant to code for MRC and even there no needs in the particular project? So regarding the M MRC, method related charge. Okay. okay, very good question. Why contractor or tenderer doesn't utilize MRC? The, pre the first comment, I mean, I mean, I, 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 I did ask my colleague eh, somewhere in one agency that using my system one, since 2014, eh? the answer to that is contractor doesn't know what it means. Yeah. So when you does the contractor doesn't know what it means, that's why they don't put anything. They put zero. That's why I give an example just now. Uh, everybody doesn't know what is MRC. Only one person knows, and he use it innovatively, creatively to his advantage, and allow him to uh, to 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 offer. Uh, more competitive tender and eventually he's been selected to do the, the work. So that, that, that is an example. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Uh, okay, actually uh, I will share the the PDF slide after this to to this group, uh, to, 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 to the chat, uh, at, at the chat board after this. So I will um, take another question. I think, uh, okay, from IS Lango project, my season can be adopted and I think, uh, and the project is more on maintenance and repair works. Is it can be used uh, my system for project that more on maintenance and for repair works? Okay, very good question. Generally, I would say it's possible to use my system too, because my system too uh, has all the necessary item uh, to to for maintenance and repair work, including for the M, uh, mechanical and electrical works. Eh? So that depends. So in my case, should you prepare the BQ and you unable to find any item uh, in the my system to be a uh, books, it's not none is re relevant to it. So in term, uh, in the part of coding, you just put it zero, nothing. And if you want to, it looks very similar to a group of my system group uh, item of works, you can use number nine. So it's quite interesting because for example, uh, just want to relate road works in Malaysia. We have an extensive uh, network of road in Semenanjung Malaysia and Sabah Sarawak. Okay, so in, in, in Semenanjung Malaysia, uh, there's a lot of requirement for repair and maintenance. Eh? There's a preventive, uh, a preventive maintenance and predict maintenance that kind of thing. Eh? So uh, the BQ somehow most of the time is applicable. I mean, my system too is most of the time is applicable. Sometimes it's not applicable because the item is simply not there. So you can uh, introduce that item and on the coding part, leave it zero. Thank you. Okay. So another question. Uh, so uh, the character gets in uh, MRC. Uh, again, tadi Aji dah, dah, dah jawab. Did the contractor aware of this during the pricing? I think uh, Aji dah jawab dah tadi. So I think I take another question. Um, okay, <clears throat> once uh, my season 2 is implemented, is SMM2 is still relevant or is considered outdated? 
in the construction industry. So that that is uh, the question. From Mina, so can you repeat that question again? Okay. Uh, once my system is impl implemented, I mean maybe man, I mean what he's trying to say, he's trying to say is uh, mandated. Good. I think both can be used and uh, my system or SMM two. And once my system is implemented, is SMM two still relevant to use or considered outdated in the construction industry? Okay, thank you for that question. The question is the relationship between my system two yeah. and SMM two. Okay, as I explained just now when I do present, mm -hmm. okay, my system two is meant for civil engineering project only. Okay, whereas SMM two and the recent pro uh, re re recent production for RSM called my sum, that is for building works. So two different animal altogether, is it? Of course, we're talking about projects, but uh, building works normally meant for dwelling unit, whereas for civil engineering pro project is normally not meant for dwelling unit. There's another one good uh, criteria to uh, to distinguish between the two of them. And civil engineering is normally infrastructure, and building is normally for uh, dwelling or, or accommodation structure. So for accommodation structure, you use SMM2 or my SERM, and for civil engineering, you use uh, my system too. I hope I answer you. Okay, uh, Aji. Uh, another question is, um, okay, if let's say the 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 building project and the client insists you you need to use uh, my system instead of using SMM two, is it is it possible? And then, thank you for that question. In, I mean, the client insists to use my system two for building project. Yeah. So in that case, the consultant normally the QS and the, the and CNS engineer must go together. They must go meet the client and explain what's the purpose of uh, the building SMM, the difference between building SMM and civil engineering SMM. So I hope that the both of them can convince the client accordingly. For therefore, for a, pro a building project, they can they need to use my sum or previously called SMM two. Not it's not proper to use my system two for building project even okay. though actually actually in my system two if you have the book there's one class yeah okay. class m building works yeah. and even though under my system two uh, there's a class for building actually this building is for a minor building incidental to civil engineering project for example okay. you have a, a highway project right when you have a highway project at interchanges they require a high mass lighting all right so in order to have a high mass lighting, TNB will insist that you have to have a TNB substation. So then for this type of TNB substation, you can use class M building works under my system two for that purpose. So uh, I mean, it's not proper to use uh, class M for a major project. I mean, such as a main terminal building, that kind of thing. Yeah, okay. It's simply not enough it is, it's because the average man for building incidental to civil engineering. Incidental to the, okay. Okay, uh, let me take another questions. Um, okay, uh, Salam Hadi, adakah my season 2 uh, slash season 4 UK boleh dikatakan sebagai BIM friendly? Uh, this is a question related to BIM, BIM, seperti right. friendly, my, my SM. Yeah. Okay, good question. First of all, BIM, the, the word BIM, Building Information System, people always relate building as the building structure. Actually, it's not. Building here means constructing. You know? So, when you construct, need to construct building or you need to construct a bridge, you need to construct a highway, it's still BIM. Okay, that's first of all. Eh? Number two, BIM, when you use BIM, so basically, uh, because you remember UK is the the leading uh, leading uh, group that using BIM. Eh? They have been using BIM almost 15, 20 years now. So they have CSMM4 and ours SMM2. We take cognizance eh, of CSMM4 when we upgrade from my system one to my system two. So I would say that my system two is BIM friendly. Uh, is a BIM friendly things. Eh? So uh, uh, that is my general opinion uh, because I'm not a BIM user. 
uh, but I hope so. Somebody or family with me can answer me uh, can answer better than what I have answered. I, I hope I answer you. Okay, I think another last question from the floor is um, okay. Most issues during construction arise is confusing between description and the description item of work and uh, and my C and my CESMM two. Uh, in terms of coverage, uh, like MRC, do you do you think most of the tender did not know about about uh, MRC and how to use my system too? Uh, what your okay. opinion? Yeah. Good question. I mean, I mentioned earlier that since 2000, uh, 2011, uh, CIDB has been championing the course, uh, 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 training uh, trainer like myself more than hundred hours, and also have. MOU for, with more than 20 key uh, key organization JKR, JPS, JPP, uh, KKLW, uh, Gamuda, MRT Corp, Pasarana, um, and many others. Eh? Uh, 20 or more than 20 of them uh, all uh, together. So they have been training uh, representative from this organization. So this organization is is hope. That when they need to prepare BQ, they will prepare BQ uh, uh, using my system two as a basis. Uh, if that project is a civil engineering or infrastructure project, that's number one. Number two, uh, CIDB started going to con conduct a course, uh, intensive course, one day intensive course on my system for contractors, uh, giving CCD points also to the technical uh, personnel from contractors. Uh, uh, technical personnel, I think it is obvious to us normally they are, can be an architect, can be a QS, can be an engineer and a related associated uh, profession. So they will come and be trained by uh, themselves at C uh, CIDB. Uh, I think in maybe two, three years time, uh, you can say the bulk of contractor, especially G7, G uh, G6 and G5 are familiar with, are very much familiar with this method related charges MRC and we will see that they will start uh, utilizing MRC in their tenders. Well, that is my opinion. Uh, I hope I answer you. Okay, uh, ada soalan yang, I mean, um, there is a specific soalan regarding my season punya coding and also the 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 unit of measurement lah. Uh, okay. It, okay, can I measure drainage as breakdown into a concrete homework? A rebar instead of single item in meter run. And that is from Josephine Teo. Maksudnya, boleh tak uh, kita buat measure the drainage breakdown into a concrete. I mean, uh, from work, rebar and and concrete instead of a single meter run. Okay, it's possible to do that. But you need to indicate that in the preambles. In the preambles, you mentioned for drainage works, uh, the line drain shall be break into components such as below number one excavation number two uh, concrete base number three is the line number four is the, the brickwork number four is the, the, the i mean like that and you in that breakdown also you mentioned the the the, the mentioned the, the the units huh? because excavation could be meter then the line the the the, the scupper drain is in in in, in meter and the, the uh, the plastering is square meter, that kind of thing. So that one I have to mention. But my opinion is that uh, for drainage, most of the time the drainage is not that deep, you know. I mean, anything less than 1.5 meter, I mean, excavation. We are, we are, we, when we are talking about road, roadside drain, you know, toe drain, car off drain, that kind of thing, eh? uh, cascade drain. Eh? So I think there's no point for you to break it that way. First, you will... Uh, you will uh, make your work unnecessary, unnecessary extra. I mean, additional work uncalled for. So, because my system already highlighted that you measure line drain as per meter. So, you just describe uh, toe drain uh, give, given the size huh? and the thickness, whatnot, is in the drawings, huh? given the size only. Because toe drain come in many, many sizes, huh? can be 1.2 meter wide can be 2 meter wide, can be 600 meter, 600 mm wide, that kind of thing. So just mention the width, then the, the then uh, is measured in, in linear meter, that's it. Uh, yeah. the, the, 
Then excavation is of course another separate item. Then the one is of course measured in cubic meter. So it's much simpler, sweet and simple. And unless you really think you require to break it down into that kind of you know elemental breakdown, which is add additional work to you. So I don't recommend you to do so, but it's possible. Thank you. I hope I answered you. Okay, uh, another request from uh, Adeline Shah. Uh, we, Adi, we use lump sum unit for the BQ. So we need to add nine in front of all item. So we use lump sum unit for the BQ. So we need to add nine in front of all item. Is it dia punya soalan? Adakah sampai soalan itu? All right, I, I, I hope I understand the question. Okay. Assuming you want to change the unit, maybe let's say lah, set yeah. clothing, instead of the uh, hectare, you want to use lump sum. Given the drawing, say lah, eh, given the drawing, this is the set clearing you need to do. Instead of hectare, you use lump sum. Eh? Then the coding you use number nine. Well, it's possible to do so. Uh, but better, you if you want to amend anything in terms of, uh, it's highly recommended, you want to amend uh, the units or not, you better do it and mention it in preambles. That is better. Should you come into a dispute later, at least you have mentioned it in preambles and you have a upper hand compared to your contractor. And then is my opinion. I, I hope I answered you. Okay, uh, they tanya lagi. Uh, in your opinion, how to use my system, especially during CIPA case, CIPAA case or any claim uh, by the contractor? Is it um, uh, beneficial to use uh, my, my system compared to others standard method of measurement? Okay, right. In my opinion, first of all, when before you go to edu uh, education, of course, you have your document ready. Eh? As I mentioned, at the start of the project, you have what? Uh, the uh, uh, letter of acceptance, condition, uh, uh, article agreement, condition of contract, and uh, preambles. You have your specification, drawings, and of course, bill of quantities, huh? BQ. Eh? For BQ, assuming this is a civil engineering project, you better prepare it using my system 2. Because my system 2 is an established standard method measurement for civil engineering work in Malaysia. And it's also being enabled by another document, which is the Malaysian standard for civil engineering standard method of measurement, MS2701. Okay, so if you are a consultant and yet today is 2021 and you fail to do so and you have been brought, dragged into adjudication, if I'm the adjudicator, you say, your first of all, well, your consultant is incompetent. I would say that if I'm the adjudicator incompetent because the right method of standard, uh, the right way of preparing BQ shall be my system too. And you, and it seems that the client and the consultant have failed to do so and it will put you into a disadvantage compared to the claimant, compared to the non-paying party, I mean, sorry, to the unpaid party, yeah? so that kind of thing. So, uh, as a conclusion, I would like to recommend when you, today, if you come, uh, you come to a, a project, which is a civil project, you better use my system too without fail. Okay. Now I I, think, uh, I also like to take the opportunity to ask a, uh, to ask a question and answer myself. The question now is my system two mandatory today? The answer is still no, because even though we have this my system two BQ, I mean uh, sorry, my system two book, the green book, and the mission standard that come with it, uh, we are still waiting for one uh, circular from MOF. Uh, upon presentation of one document from CIDB called RIA, which is Regulatory Impact uh, Assessment on the impact of using my system into the industry. So, pre actually, the, 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 the move of preparing the, the, this document has been started in 2019, but because of this COVID situation, it's been kind of stopped, you know, so maybe once we are over with the pandemic, the, the effort will be continued. Maybe sometime and uh, sometime next year or end of next year or the year before that, after that, you will expect to see a circular from MOF instructing all government agencies to use my system two 
for all civil engineering projects. By that time, it is a mandatory and compulsory uh, legally to use my system two in Malaysia. I hope I answer you. Okay, uh, let me see. Maybe we have uh, another questions. Okay, Masud. Okay, after this, we going to attach the material presentation here in the chat room. Uh, okay, I think what else? <clears throat> okay, I think uh, I I want to answer the Shamim Amani question just now. Uh, Haji dah mentioned about uh, about uh, whether SMM relevant when my system is implemented and both uh, <coughs> my SMM can be used and my uh, SMM pun boleh digunakan that is the di that is the different uh, between SMM and my system and because of uh, uh, my system is meant for um, infrastructure work uh, SMM meant for uh, building works so I think Haji dah 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 jawab dah tadi. So uh, dia dia suruh ulang dia punya jawapan tadi. Kan? So um, okay, what else, Haji? Kata-kata uh, terakhir sebelum kita tamat kan? Uh, do 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 <coughs> Ada apa pun nak 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 tanya Haji regarding this uh, this topic and also um, sebab soalan kat chat room. Hopefully saya dah menjawab saya dah baca semua soalan daripada daripada floor. So um, kalau yang saya termis tu saya minta maaf. Okey, saya kalau yang saya termis tu saya minta maaf. Saya rasa saya dah jawab dah semua. Uh, dah dah baca dah semua. So Dr. Amno ada nak tambah sebelum kita nak tamatkan? Oh, okey. Ah uh, saya just nak share my personal experience. Ah uh, sebab saya uh, I'm doing my PE with uh, Haji so he's my mentor for my PE. Terima kasih Haji atas tunjuk ajar. Ya sama-sama. Basically ah uh, saya memang tak ada knowledge on BQ sebab my background is pure civil engineering. So bila um, my first experience belajar tentang my system dia memang memudahkan uh, all the engineers and uh, QS out there untuk kita write up the statement sebab the previous BQ kita maybe ada conflict on the statement kan uh, dia punya amount and so on but bila kita guna my system is very direct dia ada coding so dia akan avoid uh, the miscommunication between parties I mean contractor, client and everything and consultant so for, so far I think is a good approach uh, to work in a big team in a big project because all the information will be delivered clearly and uh, there is no issue on the miscommunication and if other friction ke apa pun it's easy to settle because it's very clear coding untuk um, on the statement dalam kita punya project so that's my personal opinion and I really um, hope that everyone will uh, join the workshop organized by IG and, uh, and under CIDB so let's learn more on uh, my system uh, Okay. Uh, okay, thank okay. you. Uh, so basically, I just want to take the opportunity here uh, for the young engineers, young QS, maybe can take opportunity to, to undergo further training on my system too and to obtain yourself a copy of my, uh, my uh, of, of the uh, standard library description okay, okay, okay. because uh, for, for young, okay, young okay, okay. engineers and young I mean, young civil engineers and uh, quality surveyors, if you are from the consultancy uh, organization, it's good for you to know how to prepare the BQ. Whereas if you are uh, con working for under contracting capacity, eh, you are the project manager, site engineer, site QS, or the project QS for the contractor, it's good for you to attend CIDB one day course eh, under CIDB holdings on my system. So you will know better about the subject matter and especially on method related charges. Eh? As I mentioned, eh, if you know how to uh, creatively use method related charges, it probably can work positively uh, for you. And so to, to put you yourself in a better position. Eh? And again, uh, for students, for example, it's good for, uh, it's, it's good for you to have the green copy of the My System 2 book. Eh? And this book can be purchased at any of CIDB branches or CIDB HQ. 
And if you are in Petaling Jaya, you can also obtain it at BCISM eh, to purchase of this book. Eh. Uh, uh, finally, that is having said. And having said, my system too, please uh, make yourself also knowledgeable on the newly uh, produced book by our colleague, eh, by our uh, sister organization, eh, which is uh, Royal Institution of Survey of Malaysia, because they just come up with the new my system. Eh, MYSMM, Nation Standard Method Measurement for Building Works. Eh? Uh, this available for purchase at RISMPJ at 60 ringgit per copy. Eh? So I hope you, uh, all of you, students, uh, lecturers, uh, those who in the industry uh, can take up my system to the next level and to apply it to the maximum. And I always say to my colleague who's preparing BQ, please work in body system. One person prepare BQ, the one person try to find your mistake. So then only you can have a almost a, or a watertight BQ. No, 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 play, uh, no, uh, no place for the BQ to to uh, to have any loophole or areas for the contractor to claim uh, to claim extras against you whatnot and like that. So thank you for the organizer. Thank you to UITM uh, to Engineer Asrol to engineer Dr. Um, uh, Amnu Zahira for con conducting this webinar, allowing me to appear un under UITM banner to present my system to, to the general public and especially the students. Okay, thank you, Aji. So uh, <clears throat> to end the, the session, I think uh, <clears throat> I already upload the Google Drive, uh, uh, the content, and maksudnya dia punya slide show, uh, slide ni um, in PDF de dekat dalam Google Drive. Hope you can uh, try. Can 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 someone confirm me that you you get the the my share file? Sebab uh, I ingat boleh uh, terus masuk kat dalam tu. Rupanya dia kena share the drive. Boleh boleh dapat. Okay, alhamdulillah. Okay, so <coughs> by that I think kita um, tamatkan kita punya session ni dengan uh, tasbih kifarah dan surah wal as. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Assalamualaikum and thank you for your participation and and, and attendance. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Maaf atas sebarang kekurangan.